Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Motor One US YouTube channel, where today we're taking our first look at the 2021 Rolls Royce Ghost. And I'm joined by MotorOne.com senior editor, Brett T. Evans. What's going on? How's it going, man? We have a new ghost. We do. We're excited about it. I think yeah. uh, like with uh, most Rolls Royce products, there is both a ton to talk about and not that much because yeah. these are subtle evolutions, we yeah. like to say, yeah. from car to car. But the, the first gen Ghost uh, was a huge success for Rolls Royce. Obviously the smaller uh, sedan counterpart to the Phantom and they're looking to capitalize on that even more um, and push forward. So we have some details on the new Ghost uh, it still uses the 6.75 liter V12, this time making 563 horsepower, which will get you to 60 miles per hour in 4.6 seconds, very comfortably, of course. It now weighs 5,600 pounds, which is sizable. Uh, and it's 218 inches long, which for other poor people like you and myself is somewhere in between a Tahoe and a Suburban just to show you how actually long this thing is. And it's not even the Phantom, it's, it's smaller yeah. than a Phantom. Yeah. The doors now open automatically as well as close automatically because yeah. you shouldn't have to open a door no. when you buy a Ghost. Um, and we're gonna talk about this in just a bit, but the grill now lights up because they just need you to know a little bit more that it's the new Ghost. But let's talk about the exterior styling a bit. What do you think? Um, I like it. You know, I, I think we differ a little bit on that, but I think it looks pretty uh, graceful and stylish. I think they did a very good job of updating the, you know, the outgoing Ghost and making it a little more modern, a little more uh, sleek and aerodynamic. Um, Rolls Royce really planted a flag with the previous generation Phantom that was, that was like, this is new Rolls Royce. This is our design now. But uh, since then, they've kind of done these very evolutionary changes that that I think look pretty good. Um, you can di still definitely tell it's a ghost. Um, let's talk about that front grille. Um, the radiator shell no longer extends up onto the hood. It's just on the front. And those vertical grille vanes are illuminated. Um, and just to kind of like show you how much attention to detail that Rolls-Royce put into this thing, their first draft of that illuminated grille, they thought that it was too shiny and too ostentatious. So they brushed the finish of the backside of the grill vanes so that they didn't produce as much reflection. Uh, so that's just that just is a window. That's why this thing costs so much, and that's why uh, I want to know what that meeting was like when they stepped back at it the first time and said, "No, that's too bright. The grill too looks much. too bright. Like it just got its teeth white." And so let's yeah. paint the radiator grill to tone it down a bit. So now just softly. That's a, that's up. a fantastic simile right there. <laughs> um, I don't think they'd be too pleased to hear you say that, but that's okay. I don't know uh, if they'll be pleased about all of this because I don't <laughs> think it's as elegant as it could be. You used a word earlier when you and I were talking about the car that I think is totally right. The lines on it are now fast. Mm. They're kind of yeah. faster than they were before. And it's um, sort of more curvy and less squared off. You, um, you definitely see that on the rear end. It's definitely a, a more steep, a steeper rake on the rear end and, and uh, much more of like a sloping design rather than kind of the upright Rolls Royces of the past. You mentioned the swept tail. Um, that they had a few years ago that they didn't make too many of. And I think that was a perfect simile for that thing. Yeah, the swept tail was that concept one-off car that I think at one point in time might still be the most expensive car in the world. Um, and they included just a lot more character in that design. I do think some of that actually works its way in to the rear three quarter because that is the only compliment I'm giving it because I see way too much Chrysler 300 in this thing's rear three quarter design. Um, I should mention that we plan on driving the new Ghost actually in the next few weeks. So we'll be able to see the car in person, do a full written road test, as well as take a closer look at the exterior and interior. But for now, I think it looks nice. It is a good evolution from the Ghost uh, that's been sold up until this year, but I just don't know if it totally captures me. If I had to choose right now between a Bentley Flying Spur or this, just based on the looks alone, I'm going with the Bentley. All right, that's fair. It's something about the spec too, right? I mean, we, we're used to seeing these wilder color combinations, um, but I do think that Rolls Royce is used to use a ton of chrome and they used mm -hmm. to have all these crazy design elements as to where now they're starting to tone some of that back because frankly, those design touches are just kind of tacky now. Dated, yeah, absolutely. The you wheel see it. look great. I am a big fan of this wheel design. I still like that they have the loud and proud uh, chrome door handles as well. I don't think you can get rid of that in a Rolls. Um, 
but I do think they've done a good job of dialing back some of the drama. Do you agree? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, the, one thing that they're very proud of is that the spirit of ecstasy no longer lives on the radiator grill. She has her own home on the hood now. And so, you know, whereas before the radiator shell would kind of like wrap up over the front of the car, um, now it's just limited to that, that front prow. And so for her to have a yeah. home, she had to live in sheet metal instead of chrome. And that's, you know, they, they made a big deal about that. That's kind of an important thing for Rolls Royce. Um, and so that's kind of an interesting design feature. Um, I definitely agree. They, they've dialed it back quite a bit, especially relative to Rolls Royces of 10, 20 years ago. It looks a lot more, you know, subtle and, and uh, graceful. So I agree there. Just a couple of the highlights from the absolutely enormous press release full of Rolls Royce beautiful language. Uh, there are 338 panels on the interior and all of them are covered in something nice. And Rolls Royce uh, made it a point to say, no matter how visible the panel is, they're gonna cover it in something nice. They use 20 cow hides to make the interior. I don't know the size of these cows, where <laughs> these things are, but there's 20 of them, which seems like a lot. Yeah, definitely, definitely true. They're also very proud of the fact that for the first time, the ghost gets open pore wood trim as an option um you know so if you if you're not a glossy guy and i'm definitely not you can get not open a glossy pour. Guy. i'm not a glossy guy you can look at me i'm not a glossy guy and you can definitely uh definitely option um beautifully finished open pore wood trim as you'd expect on a rolls royce the panels are mirror matched so you're going to get kind of the same graining on either side of the dashboard um that full width piece of wood trim is pretty nice um it, yeah it definitely definitely screams that um, they took their time with this one for sure. Regarding that open pour wood and the few new wood options that are in the interior, I'm not one to read from press releases directly, but sure. will you allow me to do my favorite sentence out of the whole thing? Please. Uh, the open pour wood bravely showcases materials in their naked form. They have Love gone it. through the adventure of doing wood without gloss on it, which is something you can see in a Kia Telluride. Yes, um, very brave of Rolls Royce for sure. Very brave of them indeed. My favorite detail of the interior is the light up dashboard. I, I knew you were gonna say that. How could you not like that? I, I don't hate it. I just knew that that was gonna be a Clint thing. That was gonna be his thing. It, it's perfect. I mean, yeah. they made it yeah. a huge point years ago to say that the roof has all the stars in it. You can still yeah. get it, the, the starry night thing with the shooting stars. And now it's like they took that and brought it to the dash as well. Yeah. Because the more things that light up in this bad boy, the more badass you feel driving in it at night. Well, and it's kind of cool, again, attention to detail. Um, when those panels aren't illuminated, like if the vehicle is off, for example, that's just a plain, flat, beautiful piece of, of um, glossy trim. They did that by putting the lighting, the illuminated elements underneath three layers of materials. So there's a translucent layer, there's a tinted layer, and then there's a very finely tinted top coat that is then like highly polished. And so again, <laughs> like, you know, you, you, you don't get that on a Kia Telluride. That's a pretty pretty nice piece of um, engineering for Rolls Royce to go through all of that effort for for something that minuscule, which again, just kind of speaks to what you get when you buy a Rolls Royce. Yeah, I agree. Um, we have an updated version of the infotainment, which mm -hmm. we all know is BMW iDrive based, just a mm -hmm. different Rolls Royce interpretation of it. Uh, and then we also adopt the new digital gauges from the Phantom, which are some of my favorite digital gauges. I think what's going to happen is you look at an infotainment screen like MBUX, where it's these two massive can't miss them screens. And five, 10 years from now, they're not going to look that great because right. of the way things progress. It's where these are very subtle. Mm -hmm. They still look like traditional gauges, um, but they are, of course, digital. And I think they look really, really clean and nice. Sure. Yeah. Other than that, as we get to the middle of the dash, you and I sort of part ways here because <laughs> you don't like the way the HVAC controls are laid out, which is a really specific thing to criticize. I, I'm not going to criticize it in terms of layout. I think it's great that they have physical buttons and that they're not resorting to an entirely touch-based interface. I think that's wonderful, good for them. That's just a big piece of black material sitting in the middle of the dash and without touching it and knowing that it's probably wrapped in leather or something like that, it looks a little bit to me like the HVAC panel in a Dodge Caliber. So I just really, really hope that what that actually is, is like an illuminated screen and that when the car is on, you get some kind of HVAC readout on the top of that panel because that just looks like too much sea of black for me. But 
what we do know is, is just seeing this in pictures. It, yeah. it looks great, but there's easy things that we can pick out. When oh. we actually sit in this thing in person, it's going to be incredible because any yeah. Rolls-Royce product does this sort of thing. And they've made a huge point to say that the acoustics are much better this yes. time around. They've improved the sound system. It's yeah. way quieter overall compared to the current Ghost. Um, and I well, think, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and what I think what is cool is they've actually turned the entire cabin into a speaker and subwoofer. They have uh, resonance chambers in the door sills, and then they have an exciter on the headliner that turns both of those panels into actual like sound producing chambers. So you can actually get this like, you just get enveloped in sound uh, when you have the audio system running, which is really impressive. And I, I am super envious that you get to drive this thing in a couple of weeks because I really want to know how that sounds when you've got it totally cranked up. I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah, we'll be sure to get it on video. Um, yes. Ghost is a car that customers drive and I guess occasionally are driven in as well yeah. so of course the back seat is just as opulent as mm -hmm. the front seat lots of leg room we have some uh new updates we have nice pillowy headrests as well in the back seat and then you can see that there are uh some of the things that we've known from past rolls products with trade tables that pop out and then uh, two individual displays in the front seats as well mm -hmm. overall it looks great and i think the interior is a much better improvement than the exterior as subtle yeah. as it is yeah I, I yeah i agree um any final thoughts on this for now this is our rough first look at the 2021 ghost like i said we'll have much more coming in just a few weeks yeah you know i think it looks great i think that it kind of uh definitely shows what rolls royce engineers are capable of when they're given a lot of a lot of uh free reign to make some pretty pretty cool choices. Um, you know, it's a Rolls Royce, it's going to be expensive, it's going to be powerful, it's going to be um, pretty conspicuous, which is why I think it's a little weird that they're talking about uh, post opulence minimalistic design. You know, this is still a vehicle that gets about 11 miles per gallon city according to their press release, maybe about 22 miles per gallon highway. It's maybe, got, which is generous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got, you know, it, it sits in the highest tier of emissions, which if you're going to talk about minimalistic design and then ignore consumption and emissions, I think that's kind of a problem. But, you know, it's still going to be an absolutely fabulous vehicle for, for the wealthy. And I can't wait to see how it looks on the road. I love seeing them around town. I love seeing the current generation around town. So I can't wait to see this one on the road and maybe get my hands on it sometime. It's definitely a pretty special vehicle. Yeah, that makes two of us. Yeah. Uh, but for now, Brett T. Evans, thank you for joining me. And thank you, everybody, for checking out with us the 2021 Rolls-Royce Ghost.